Okay, now let's take what you just learned about who's oxidized and reduced and take it one further step in writing half reactions. Reactants turn into products. Now in oxidation, the reactants have a smaller charge than the products do. Charge becomes more positive by losing electrons. If X is negative, it turns to zero by losing electrons. The electrons are placed on the product side to show that they've been lost. Just like when we did alpha and beta decay, we put the alpha and beta particle over here to show they were given off. Just like when we write exothermic reactions, we put heat over here to show that it's lost. If you want to show something that's lost, you put it on the product side. And for reduction, we put the electrons on the reactant side to show that they're being gained. So what you do when you write a half reaction is you write the charge of the species on the reactant side, you write what charge the species is on the product side, and put the electrons on the appropriate side to satisfy the law of conservation of charge. Calcium is plus two, sulfide is minus two, you can verify it on the periodic table. These guys are all by themselves, so they have no charge. All by themselves, they're all alone. So, oxidation and reduction. Let's see who does what. Well, first of all, calcium starts off as plus two and ends up as zero. So it's reduced. So we write calcium plus two ends up as calcium zero. Sulfur starts off as minus two and ends up at zero. So it was oxidized. S minus two turned into S zero. Now what we do is we put in electrons in such a way that the charges balance each other on each other's side. Oxidation, electrons are lost. How do you go from minus two to zero? By losing two electrons. Notice we have minus two on this side and a combined charge of minus two on this side. Calcium starts off at plus two, it ends up as zero by gaining two electrons. We have a charge of zero on this side, We've got plus two and a combined minus two, which adds up to zero on this side. From a configuration standpoint, S minus two has an electron configuration of two dash eight dash eight. S zero has a configuration of two dash eight dash six. So how did it do this? By losing two electrons. Calcium plus two has a configuration of two dash eight dash eight. Calcium zero has a configuration of 2882. So how did you get from plus two to zero? By gaining two electrons. And we put those electrons on the left side to show that they've been gained and so that the law of conservation of charge is obeyed. For the next example, magnesium is zero, copper is plus two because sulfate's minus two. Verify these. Magnesium is plus two, sulfate is minus two, and copper is zero. Magnesium starts off as zero and it ends up going up to plus two. So magnesium zero is oxidized and it turns into magnesium plus two. How does it do that? Well, to go from zero to plus two, you have to lose two negative electrons. Magnesium has a configuration of two, eight, two. The magnesium ion has a configuration of 2-8. To go from one to the other, two electrons have to be lost. Copper starts off as plus two and ends up as zero. How did that happen? Well, the two electrons that magnesium lost were gained by the copper. And that's the half reaction for the reduction of copper. Notice, zero on this side, Plus two and minus two adds up to zero on this side. Plus two and minus two add up to zero on this side, and we have zero on the other. So check yourself to make sure you're obeying the law of conservation of charge. Hydrogen has a charge of zero. Oxygen has a charge of zero. Here, hydrogen is plus one, and oxide is minus two. Now remember when we said that if you identify a species as being oxidized or reduced, and that species is diatomic, one of the Brinkelhoffs, and you have to write it that way when you identify this being oxidized or reduced. H2 goes from zero to plus one. So we write H2 zero is oxidized. O2 goes from zero to minus two. So O2 zero is reduced. Now how do we handle this in the reaction? Here's what you do. H2 forms H plus one. Now I can hear you say, well, why don't you write H2 plus one? Aha! 
H2 is zero because hydrogen has one valence electron that it desperately wants to share with another hydrogen. But H plus doesn't have any valence electrons. You can't form a molecule of H2 plus one. It's not possible. There's no way you can put two hydrogens together in such a way that they end up with a plus two charge. So to balance it, we put the two in front. You see, when the hydrogens lose their two valence electrons, they become two H plus ions. And those two electrons are lost. Why two electrons? Because each hydrogen lost one. Two hydrogens went from being zero to plus one. That means that two electrons were given off. Or if you prefer, two times plus one is plus two, and that's minus two, that adds up to zero, the same as what you have on the other side. The oxygen starts off as being diatomic, but ends up as not being diatomic. Same deal, there's no such thing as O2 minus two. O2 looks like this. When these oxygens form minus two ions, they each gain two electrons. This oxygen gains two electrons, now it has a stable octet and has a minus two charge. This oxygen gains two electrons, now it has a stable octet and a minus two charge. We have two oxide ions. Now, this oxygen gained two, this oxygen gained two, for a grand total gainage, is that even a word, of four electrons two for each of the oxygens. And you can see how this works. We've got minus four on this side, and two times two is minus four on that side. So the law of conservation of charge is obeyed. For this one here, sodium is zero, hydrogen is plus one. We have hydroxide on both sides. According to table E, the hydroxide ion has a minus one charge. Sodium is plus one, the hydroxide ion is minus one, and this hydrogen is zero. Sodium starts at zero, goes up to plus one. Na started off as zero, it ends up as plus one by losing its one and only valence electron. You can write it as just E, or you can write the one in here, whatever floats your boat. Usually it's gonna be water that floats your boat. That's usually how boats float. Over here, hydrogen starts off as plus one and ends up as a diatomic molecule on that side. So we have to balance it by putting a two in front of that hydrogen. And how many electrons get gained? Two times plus one is plus two. We need two minus electrons to cancel that out. Lithium is zero, fluorine is zero, lithium is plus one, fluoride is minus one. Lithium starts off as zero and it ends up as plus one. It did this by losing its one and only valence electron. Lithium is 2 dash 1. Lithium plus 1 is just 2 for its configuration. It lost its valence electron. There it is. The fluorine starts off diatomic, so we write it as being diatomic. It ends up as F minus 1. So we balance that by putting the 2 in front of the fluoride ion. And how many electrons have to be gained to have 2 fluoride minus 1s? 2 electrons. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. We need 2 negative electrons to finish the deal.